In the summer of 2016, the author of this book made a new research-related discovery regarding the mystery of Oak Island, Nova Scotia, the site of Canada's longest-running treasure hunt. The subject of this discovery is called the McGinnis Code. Before we get to the McGinnis Code, we must first come to a general understanding of Oak Island and its ongoing treasure hunt. Oak Island is located off the southeastern shore of Nova Scotia in a place called Mahone Bay. Back in 1795, a local settler named Daniel McGinnis discovered a depression in a clearing in the forest on the eastern end of the island. Knowing well that Mahone Bay in the 16th and 17th centuries was a frequent haunt of pirates, McGinnis suspected he had stumbled upon an unclaimed hoard of buried pirate loot. He was particularly intrigued by the notion that he might have discovered the long-lost treasure of pirate Captain William Kidd, popularly rumored to have been buried on the Acadian coast on an island covered in oaks. Daniel McGinnis quickly enlisted the help of two friends, John Smith and Anthony Vaughn. Together, the three men, equipped with picks and shovels, began digging. What they discovered underground convinced them that something of great value was buried deep beneath the surface. In 1804, the shaft, known today as the Money Pit, was sunk to a depth of 90 feet. In it, treasure hunters uncovered nine layers of oak logs placed at regular 10-foot intervals. Some of these platforms were covered by layers of charcoal, clay putty, beach stones, and coconut fiber. At the 90-foot level, treasure hunters uncovered something very strange. It was another platform of oak logs in which was set a large rectangular olive-colored stone slab. When the treasure hunters pried the stone loose, they discovered that its underside was inscribed with strange markings. Although none of them could decipher the markings, the stone's existence convinced them that the elusive treasure was close at hand. With renewed vigor, the treasure hunters tore out the oak platform, only to find more dirt beneath. Undeterred, they carried on for some time, digging down several more feet. So great was their enthusiasm that they failed to notice that the earth beneath them was becoming increasingly damp. By the time the treasure hunters uncovered the 90-foot stone, it was getting dark. After digging several feet below it, they decided to call it a day, certain that a treasure awaited them in the morning. Before exiting the money pit, they probed the earth below with an iron rod, as was their end of the day custom, and struck a hard, impenetrable object at a depth of 98 feet. Some of the treasure hunters believed another oak platform awaited them. Others believed they were mere feet from uncovering a treasure chest. All of them settled down for a restless sleep. Early the following morning, the treasure hunters grabbed their gear and headed for the money pit, only to find it filled to the 30-foot level with seawater. Undaunted, they set to bailing the pit with buckets, but to no avail. No matter how much water they bailed from the money pit, the water's surface remained more or less at the 30-foot level. Half a century later, treasure hunters learned that the money pit was connected to nearby Smith's Cove by a 500-foot-long underground flood tunnel, a booby trap. Constructed by the original Money Pit builders, the drains at Smith Cove, which fed this flood tunnel, were covered by a thick filter of coconut fiber, eelgrass, and carefully placed beach stones, which prevented the flood tunnel from being clogged with sand and vegetation. Ever since, a succession of treasure hunters have tried their hands at conquering the flood tunnel, risking social condemnation, financial ruin, and even their very lives in an effort to get to the bottom of the Oak Island mystery. As of October 2016, none have succeeded. Nevertheless, various treasure hunters over the years have made a number of tantalizing discoveries on the island and the surrounding area. Researchers and historians have studied these items and artifacts in the hope of answering the following questions. What exactly is buried on Oak Island? Where is it buried? When was it buried? Who buried it? And why did those who buried it go to such lengths to keep it hidden? To date, no one truly knows the answers to these questions, although theories abound.
Another thing we need to know before we get to the McGinnis Code is the story of the 90-foot stone, a large, olive-colored stone slab inscribed with strange markings, which was discovered in the money pit at the depth of 90 feet in 1804. The treasure hunters who discovered the 90-foot stone had no idea what to make of the strange markings carved into it, although they assumed that the stone's existence meant that the treasure they were seeking was close at hand. Unfortunately, shortly after the stone's removal, the money pit was flooded with seawater. After its removal from the money pit, the 90-foot stone came into the possession of John Smith, one of the three men who initially discovered the money pit back in 1795. Smith had the stone built into the fireplace of his new Oak Island home in 1805, where he exhibited it to visitors to the island. In 1865, eight years after Smith's death, the stone was removed from Smith's fireplace and brought to Truro, Nova Scotia by an Oak Island treasure hunter. Around that time, a linguistics professor from Halifax's Dalhousie University named James Lichty claimed that the stone was a cipher which, when decoded, read, 40 feet below, 2 million pounds are buried. After briefly residing in Truro, the stone was moved to a book bindery in Halifax where it was displayed in the shop's front window. In time, it was used as a base on which to beat individual sheets of paper. In those days, book binders beat the puffy handmade paper sheets on which text was printed, referred to in the book binding terminology as signatures, so as to flatten them out. While the stone was employed for this purpose, the strange inscription on its face gradually wore away. Suddenly, sometime in the early 1930s, the stone mysteriously disappeared. It has been missing ever since. At the time of the stone's disappearance, the nature of the strange inscription carved onto its surface was a mystery. Apparently, nobody had thought to copy the inscription down or take rubbings of the stone. It seemed as if the markings were lost to history. Out of the blue in the spring of 1949, a Nova Scotian reverend named A.T. Kempton wrote a letter to the man in charge of the Oak Island treasure hunt at the time. In it, Kempton included what he claimed was a copy of the 90-foot stone's inscription. He said that he received a copy of the inscription from an old Irish schoolmaster. The characters Kempton included in his letter formed a simple substitution cipher, in which each symbol stood for a letter in the Latin alphabet. When decoded, this cipher revealed the same message allegedly decrypted by Dalhousie professor James Lichty in 1865. 40 feet below, 2 million pounds are buried. It should be mentioned that many serious Oak Island researchers doubt the authenticity of the Kempton symbols, believing the substitution cipher they suggest to be too simplistic. One cryptoanalyst, upon analyzing the Kempton symbols, concluded that they were most likely a fraud and cannot be trusted. In spite of their general dismissal by the Oak Island community, the Kempton symbols plausibly has been bolstered by the findings of several researchers. In 1971, Dr. Ross Wilhelm, a Michigan professor who had worked as a codebreaker during World War II, noted the similarities between the Kempton symbols and those used on a cipher disk in a book written in 1563 by an Italian cryptographer named Giovanni Battista della Porta. Using Della Porta's method, Dr. Wilhelm created his own cipher disk with both the Kempton symbols and the 16th century Spanish alphabet. He applied this cipher disk to the Kempton symbols, revealing a Spanish message. When translated into English, this message read, At 80, guide millet estuary drain F. Dr. Wilhelm believed this message was an instruction to pour dried millet or corn into the box drains at Smith's Cove in order to shut off the flood tunnel. These substances, when exposed to water, expand. More recently, Dr. Wilhelm's theory has been supported and supplemented by Swedish cryptographer and Oak Island researcher Daniel Ronstam, who you might remember from Season 2, Episode 5 of the History Channel's TV series, The Curse of Oak Island. Another discovery which seemed to verify the Kempton symbols was made by a Harvard zoology professor and marine biologist named Barry Fell. In 1980, Dr. Fell, a scientist with a flair for ancient languages, published his book Saga America, a sequel to his 1976 book America BC, in which he controversially proposed that ancient Old World peoples regularly made voyages to the New World. 
long before Christopher Columbus's discovery of the Caribbean in 1492. In one small section of Saga America, Fell made some minor tweaks to the Kempton symbols, omitting some letters, subtly changing others, and flipping the whole thing upside down. He maintained that his adulterated version of the Kempton symbols spell a Libyan Arabic message using a late Tithana script, a writing system used by the Berbers of North Africa. When translated, the message read, to escape contagion of plague and winter hardships, he is to pray for an end or mitigation, the Arif. The people will perish in misery if they forget the Lord, alas. Using this translation of the Kempton symbols, along with evidence from a similar inscription found in the Atlas Mountains of Morocco, Dr. Fell proposed that the men who built the money pit and the flood tunnel from Smith's Cove were 5th century Coptic Christian refugees from North Africa, fleeing persecution from the Vandals. It must be mentioned, and this is very important, that although Coptic Christianity, a branch of the Oriental Orthodox Church, did spread to the deserts of Libya and the mountains of Morocco, where Dr. Fell suggests the original money pit builders came from, it has always, for as long as it has existed, been most prevalent in Egypt in general and in the city of Alexandria in particular. On May 1st, 2016, a writer named Karen Margiano published a book entitled Oak Island Connection, Go Back Over 200 Years to the Mysterious Beginning. In it, she recounts the stories of her mother, Jean, and her aunts Joan and Joyce, three sisters who are the direct descendants of Daniel McGinnis, the man who discovered the money pit in 1795. You might remember these McGinnis sisters from season three, episode 13 of the History Channel series, The Curse of Oak Island, in which they presented the current Oak Island treasure hunters with a small hand-hammered gold cross, a McGinnis family heirloom, and regaled them with an old McGinnis family legend. According to the legend, Daniel McGinnis, John Smith, and Anthony Vaughn discovered three treasure chests in the money pit in 1795. Each man, upon swearing each other to secrecy, kept a treasure chest for himself and his family. One particular item from the chest Daniel McGinnis claimed, the small gold cross, was handed down from father to son throughout the generations. The McGinnis sisters, late brother Jim, was the last male of the McGinnis line to inherit it. Karen Margiano, in her book, paints a fascinating picture of a McGinnis family characterized by a two-century-long legacy of treasure hunting, suggesting that the descendants of Daniel McGinnis never gave up on the Oak Island mystery. In the book, the McGinnis sisters recount how, in their childhood, their father and uncles would sometimes sit around the kitchen table strategizing, drawing plans, and studying maps in an effort to solve the Oak Island riddle that had held their family enthralled for over two centuries. Joan McGinnis, in particular, relates how her late uncle George McGinnis, while suffering from dementia, showed her a scrap of paper bearing a strange inscription which he claimed the McGinnis family had kept hidden behind a stone wall of Daniel McGinnis's cabin on Oak Island. He said, the more you discover on Oak Island, the more you will need to find the rest of the pieces of paper. I do not know where the inscription was copied from and have no idea what the symbols mean. When considered in the context of the McGinnis family legend, one wonders whether or not it is possible this scrap of paper came from the treasure chest Daniel McGinnis claimed for himself and his family in 1795. The hand-drawn copy of this scrap of paper, which Karen Margiano presented in her book, appears to be some sort of code, a McGinnis code. Upon close inspection, it is evident that many of the McGinnis code symbols are the same as the Kempton symbols, allegedly inscribed on Oak Island's 90-foot stone. When the simple substitution solution from the Kempton symbols is applied to the McGinnis code, and when the remaining characters are solved, a French message begins to emerge. This message appears to be nothing less than a set of instructions guiding treasure hunters around the flood tunnel to the Oak Island treasure. 
The first part of the message warns treasure hunters not to unearth the platform of oak logs beneath the 90-foot stone so as to not trigger the flood tunnel. The rest of the message advises treasure hunters to tunnel away from the money pit at the 90-foot level towards some sort of chamber, perhaps toward a treasure vault. One particular section of the message is very confusing. When translated to English, it reads, On an island five lighthouses distance. It almost seems as if the code is suggesting the importance of an island five lighthouses away from Oak Island as if a lighthouse is some sort of unit of measure. Intriguingly, a 2008 study published in the DIO International Journal of Scientific History posted that the sailors of ancient Ptolemaic Egypt did have a unit of measurement which might justifiably be termed a lighthouse. The Ptolemaic Kingdom was an ancient Greek kingdom based in Egypt which could trace its origins back to the famous Macedonian Greek conqueror Alexander the Great. In around 280 BC, the Ptolemaic Egyptians built a 450-foot lighthouse in their capital city of Alexandria. This lighthouse, called the Pharos of Alexandria, is considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Ptolemaic mariners sailing to the port of Alexandria from the Mediterranean Sea were unable to see the tip of the great lighthouse until they were about 21 nautical miles or 38.892 kilometers away from shore. This distance of which the Ptolemaic Egyptians were aware could quite justifiably be called a lighthouse. This potential connection between the McGinnis Code and Ptolemaic Egypt is particularly intriguing when considered in conjunction with Barry Fell's theory. Remember, Dr. Fell believed that the men who built the money pit were Coptic Christian refugees from North Africa. The capital of the Coptic Church is Alexandria. The capital of Ptolemaic Egypt was Alexandria. And the validity of both the McGinnis Code and Dr. Fell's translation of the 90-foot stone hinge upon the validity of the Kempton symbols. If the lighthouse used by the ancient Ptolemaic sailors is the unit of measurement referred to in the McGinnis Code, then it appears that the code is suggesting the importance of an island located 194.46 kilometers away from it. Five lighthouses equal 194.46 kilometers. If you draw a circle around Oak Island with a radius of 194.46 kilometers, the edge of the circle touches only one island, Grand Manan Island, located in between Nova Scotia and New Brunswick in the Bay of Fundy. Now, this is where it really gets weird. There is a particular stretch of beach on the western shore of Grand Manan Island called Money Cove. According to the local legend, Money Cove is where pirate captain William Kidd buried his fabled treasure. The same treasure, Daniel McGinnis, John Smith and Anthony Vaughn believed they had stumbled upon when they first discovered the money pit in 1795. To read more about the McGinnis Code and its connection to the Oak Island mystery, check out Oak Island, an ebook which you will find on the website mysteriesofcanada.com.